Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shape the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-3199. Item Number, SCP-3199 Object Class, Keter Special Containment Procedures All live instances of SCP-3199 are to be contained on Site-114 within a modified Keter humanoid containment chamber, hereby referred to as Primary Containment the walls of which should be coated in approximately 2 cm thick acid-resistant steel. CCTV equipment is installed in the northeastern and southwestern corners. 2 meters of empty space are to be allocated between primary and secondary containment. Secondary containment consists of suspending all live instances of SCP-3199 within a block of solid transparent substance, currently clear acrylic resin. This block is to be at a height of at least 3 meters, with one armed security guard stationed immediately outside initial containment at all times. An eight-digit passcode can be obtained from the current Site-114 director in order to bypass primary containment. Secondary containment is to be regularly examined for damages. Movement and activity of any kind is to be noted, and the current Site-114 director is to be informed at the earliest possible convenience. A temporary recall procedure is detailed in Addendum 3199-03. Experiments involving the use of live SCP-3199 instances are strictly prohibited without approval from at least two personnel of Level 4 security clearance or above. As of December 6, 2017, there are four live instances of SCP-3199 successfully contained. As of February 18, 2019, there are six live instances of SCP-3199 successfully contained. Description, SCP-3199 denotes a species of sapient Category 5 biological entities of currently indeterminable origin, though tissue samples indicate the presence of silky chicken 1, chimpanzee 2, sto 3, muscle 4, out of 5, and human DNA. They are typically hairless, stained with a thin layer of an albumin-like excretion, and stand at an average of 2.9 meters. Its weight averages 780 kilograms for a matured instance, and 360 kilograms for a hatchling. Autopsy has determined that the cervical vertebrae of a mature SCP-3199 instance is composed of cartilage, rather than bone. This enables the neck and throat to twist and dislocate to around 340 degrees in either direction, aiding their unusual reproductive cycle. SCP-3199 are opportunistic hunters, engaging with live subjects within a currently unidentified radius within a radius of 0.6 km surrounding hatchlings that have not yet reached full adolescence. Average speed is recorded at 25 km per hour. Upon contact with human or animal subjects, SCP-3199 will proceed to, redacted, liquefying internal organs and bone structure. A suitable cadaver is then transferred within range of the closest hatchling. SCP-3199 produces large eggs of an off-white coloration and rubbery appearance. An egg will pass through the entity's digestive tract, esophagus and eventually out via the mouth, followed by a viscous red substance, first thought to be a form of placenta, chemical breakdown has determined it to be a highly corrosive material. SCP-3199 shows extreme distress throughout the process with personnel describing the sound as not dissimilar to a scream. SCP-3199 produces its eggs to fill unoccupied space. There is no known limit to the number of eggs SCP-3199 is capable of producing, and the standing theory is as follows. Given enough time, a single instance could single-handedly perform an LK-class species transmutation scenario. The termination of a live instance can be achieved through a variety of equally effective methods SCP-3199 has proven to be around as resilient as a standard human subject. However, complete eradication has proven impossible difficult, as all instances of SCP-3199, regardless of age, carry one egg within a specialized stomach-like organ upon birth, assuring that one living instance will persist through even ordinary means of constant and lethal assault. This biological phenomena is presumed to be, in itself, anomalous in origin. 
a single SCP-3199 egg can bear a tremendous amount of resilience, maintaining its form and purpose even following continual subjection to extreme blunt force trauma. Pressure exceeding 180,000 pounds per square inch. High precision blades, serrated and non-serrated. Long-term acid exposure. The application of plastic explosives was considered, but quickly rejected by higher administration. Heat is a primary component in the growth and development of SCP-3199's eggs. See Addendum 3199-04. And Foundation researcher Poi Bai Fell was particularly apprehensive towards the idea, believing it would almost certainly result in a second containment breach. SCP-3199 was issued Keter classification on October 6, 2017 following a containment breach. SCP-3199's prior containment method, a sedated water bath, was disassembled and replaced with a revised containment procedure as listed above. Addendum 3199-A01 on a slash a slash 2017 05-a Dispatch the following notice. All further experiments involving SCP-3199's eggs are strictly prohibited. Hatching periods have proven too unreliable to warrant extensive research, and as the consequences of a containment breach become more and more apparent, the O5 Council have unanimously decided to nip the situation at the bud. Until new and reliable information comes to light, all personnel found acting against protocol will be subject to standard zero-tolerance risk assessment training, and a punishment determined on a case-by-case -case basis. We thank you for your continued cooperation. SCP-3199 was discovered in Ireland following witness reports of a bald creature crying like a banshee from within an undisclosed area of woodland. These reports resulted in the dispatchment of Mobile Task Force Omega-19, who arrived on site with a total of 12 armed personnel. Two personnel were lost in action, their internal organs and jaws having been almost entirely dissolved. During transportation, SCP-3199 produced two offspring, resulting in the deaths of a further six personnel. Addendum 3199-A02 on H slash H slash 2017. A thorough sweep of SCP-3199's initial recovery location was enacted in an attempt to uncover the creature's origin and purpose. Local reports suggested that the small remote residence in question had been abandoned for at least two decades. Surface Team Delta 029-E recovered several items of interest, including one bag of assorted thread and needles, in various colors and sizes, approximately 13 chicken carcasses, based on the collective halves and quarters, with precise incisions located on the underbelly, neck, and thigh. Six of the carcasses had been plucked, with visible human teeth marks lining the bare areas at random intervals. Several containers, including water bottles and Tupperware boxes, holding an unidentified watery paste. The paste was a deep brown in color, and in the presence of oxygen it turned viscous and hard. An A5 notebook brand, and heavily scratched with what was determined to be human fingernails. The words New Breed Manifesto are written on the front cover. Two chicken feather quills. The notebook itself consisted of 24 pages of standard lined paper, written in non-anomalous black ink. Nineteen of these pages consisted of various cuboid patterns and crude, childlike illustrations vaguely resembling SCP-3199. On the remaining five pages, Large lines of writing detail the diary of an unnamed individual. Much of the written script was illegible. One extract in particular, dated a slash 6 slash 1973 was written with notably higher clarity. Unknown, if you're reading this, then looky lucky you. 400,000 hour from NOTW and it'll be warm and wet and warm, and the wonderful versatility vessa versatility of inferior. Human DNA will birth a beater era, a stronger ear, one where illegible and food and water will be nothing but things of the past as we make and make and make more until until, illegible. Unknown, I really haven't much Tim. Unknown, time. Unknown, that's why I envy you so 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 much. You'll have all the time you need. 
Time will be a thing of the time will be on and on and death will be life. Life new life needs things to live. New life will be a part of life from now on. Sick. The final page consisted of various ink blots, 13 instances of the word life in inconsistent sizes, 2 instances of the words want it want I want it sick, and the lyrics to English songwriter Frederick Weatherly's Danny Boy in Old Gaelic script. The identity of the journal's author is pending investigation. Addendum 3199-03, Protocol 34-22-B. The following procedure is to occur in the event of a Site 114 containment breach, in an effort to safely and immediately recontain Live SCP-3199 instances. On-site personnel with Level 1 security clearance or above assume standard lockdown procedure and evacuate to Site 113 to await further instruction. Site 114 is to be flooded in its entirety by a clean, distilled water treated with dissolvable Class A sedatives. Surface Team Tango 306-A will be dispatched immediately to retrieve any lingering instances of SCP-3199's eggs. Any living instances of SCP-3199 will be terminated on site, and their remaining eggs will be collected. All egg samples are to be transported to temporary off-site containment within a stable water bath. Site 114 will be subsequently drained, and custodian staff will be dispatched to thoroughly clean and sanitize the grounds to a green zone foundation standard. Personnel attempting to breach Site 114 before this inspection is complete will be apprehended and punished accordingly. Note, a number of personnel have expressed their skepticism regarding the scale of SCP-3199's containment breach protocol. To clarify, we have reason to believe that fluid is an excellent counter to SCP-3199's anomalous reproductive properties. It appears to enter an inert state in the presence of liquid, regardless of thickness or clarity. The leading theory is as follows, SCP-3199 discerns the liquid around it to be occupied space. Regardless, I believe I speak for all of Site 114 when I say we are quite relieved to have found a safe and consistent method of containment. Dr. Lewis, December 5, 2017 Interview 3199-I01 Hide Video Transcript Video Transcript Date, October 28, 2017 Subject, Corporal Duncan Interviewer Dr. Ewing. Forward. Subject had undergone extensive psychiatric therapy prior to interview, and while the Foundation does not consider them responsible for the deaths of Private McLeod and Private Langley, subject expressed feelings of guilt for having neglected standard Foundation health and safety protocol. Begin log. Take a seat, right. Please, if you would. Corporal Duncan clears his throat. White noise as he sits visibly anxious. Could you explain your mission briefing? The job was pretty simple. No auditory or visual triggers that the higher ups in Site 114 knew about. Seems to me as if they'd done a pretty top job scraping the area clean. Corporal Duncan laughs nervously. Never is that easy though, huh mom? We landed around 2,100 hours. The boys and I had been told that if we couldn't catch the thing, the next best thing would be snapping a frame or two, so there they hooked us up with the best in night vision hardware. Corporal Duncan shuffles uncomfortably in his seat. I know you have pictures, LR. I know you've got something. Paper shuffling. Dr. Ewing looks grave. You're under no obligation to view the recording. Nah. Nah, I know that. Just shook me a little. Please, go on. Shivering, we found something within the hour almost like a shack, totally out of scrap metal and wood. Looked more like an oversized chicken coop than anything else, but I don't know that your new monster built it. Just made it a home. And I assume you... Entered ASAP. Of course. It was a late shift. Wanted this over as quick as possible. I'd like to say that's why I did what I did, but I can't bring myself to make excuses. 
Corporal Duncan places his head in his hands, sighing. I really really fucked it, ma'am. Pardon my French. It's perfectly appropriate, all things considered. However, I'm going to have to ask you to continue explaining the procedure. Right, right, well I had two of my men stationed at back. Private McLeod and Private Langley insisted they take first charge. Fresh out of training, they were. Kids. I should be used to it by now, but... Corporal Duncan laughs dryly. Never seen a smile get cut down so quick. It knew we were there, somehow. Jumped right at Private McLeod and, data expunged, the fucking teeth out of his head. I see it whenever I blink, ma'am. That's the shit that stays with you. The Foundation will take every measure in providing financial compensation to the families of your lost men. Could you elaborate upon the other casualty? Silence for a moment. Corporal Duncan leans back in his chair. A pause. Duncan, please, I must urge you to continue. The more we know, the more we can do to stop it from happening again. Eventually, we barely had time to react before it started moving down the corridor to the right. I guess the adrenaline had just about hit me, because I fired off enough rounds to blow a chunk out of its chest, just as its ugly head was about to round a corner. I saw. Another pause. Corporal Duncan shows visible signs of distress. I saw straight fucking moonlight on the other side. Bullseye. Thing let out the most awful scream. I have a beautiful little baby boy at home, Doc. You know that. A relevant discussion of domestic life isn't necessary for this procedure, Corporal. Could you please? Raising voice, I have a beautiful baby boy who just loves wailing when he's too cranky to sleep, and you know what. Every time he does, I think about that scream. I see it in my head. Think what it did and his pa gives him a look as if he's gonna bash his fucking head against the wall. Corporal Duncan, now standing, gradually sits back down. Strained, they were good men. Silence. Please, L.R. Kill that monster. If for no one else, for me. End log. Note, I extend my strongest condolences to the families of those lost during SCP-3199's initial recovery. Furthermore, I would like to formally request that Corporal Duncan as administered one class be amnestic at the earliest possible convenience. No excuses. Dr. E. Ewing, Site 114 Director. Addendum 3199-04, Experiment Logs. Experiment 3199-E01, Heat Exposure, Slash, Slash 2017. Subject, one egg sample from SCP-3199. Method, subject relocated to a secure containment cell. Inside temperature of the cell was gradually increased at an average rate of 7 degrees Celsius slash minute. Results, after approximately 9 minutes, the egg ruptured violently and produced a single hatchling. On-site personnel reacted swiftly to recontain the newborn instance. However, the excessive internal temperature appears to have impacted the physical maturity of the hatchling, and it reached adolescence at an accelerated rate of 40 seconds. The, now adolescent, hatchling produced two further instances of SCP-3199. Security response on-site was swift, and all three instances were detained cleanly. All subsequent heat experiments involving SCP-3199's eggs have been postponed until further notice. Experiment 3199-E02 Cold Exposure Slash 8 Slash 2017 Subject, one egg sample from SCP-3199 Method, subject submerged entirely in liquid nitrogen. Security remain on standby throughout the procedure, in light of prior experiments. After approximately 45 minutes of exposure, SCP-3199 had reached minus 190 degrees Celsius. Following two hours of exposure, 
the egg was removed and placed under a hydraulic press. Results Hydraulic press peaked at pressures of around 9,000 pounds per square inch. Cracks appeared approximately 30 minutes into exposure before the sample shattered. Egg fragments were collected and furthermore pressed into a fine pulp. Zero traces of albumin or yolk were located. Complete incineration of the shells remains proved successful in destroying the egg and its reproductive capabilities entirely. Experiment 3199-E03 Chemical Analysis of Shell Slash 2017 Sample 10 grams of finely pressed egg shell pulp taken from an SCP-3199 egg Results Detailed chemical breakdown shows traces of nacre enamel and a currently unidentified carbon compound. Microscope analysis suggests that the shell itself is composed of a tightly packed crystalline structure. Practical application of this material is pending administrative approval. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.